when you see things and it's like you see it from one end but then you see it from the other end too and you really don't agree with neither one of them let's get right on into it <laughs> Okay, so we're picking up where we left off on the last episode where they're at the fashion show. And they call Alyssa on the phone. Now, Jewel don't know if Alyssa is white or Mexican. So, um, the first thing that she does is ask her, are you white or are you Mexican? Or whatever. And Alyssa says that she's uh, Mexican. And then, you know, uh, Jewel already made it known that she only wants to fuck with the black people. She really don't want nothing to do with, you know, nobody else. But... You know, people are calling it racist. I feel like anytime, and I know that you'll feel like black people can't be racist, but I feel like anytime you discriminate against somebody because of the color of their skin, that's racist. That's prejudice. That's, it doesn't matter what race you are. It's the same thing. You know, that's how I feel about it. Um, you know, then Remy Martell, <laughs> he loves it when I call him that. Remy Martell was talking about, talking to Millie B about Dante. He was like, why y'all keep saying that's my man? That's not my man. He was like, well, y'all look like y'all men. Y'all look like y'all go together. Y'all look like y'all go together. So then, next thing you know, uh, Millie B was getting ready to follow Jewel until he saw a picture that Jewel had on her page. And the picture was someone that was previously on the Circle NYC. I never watched that show before, but it's somebody named B-Hawk. Um, I'm thinking, I don't know what what they are. I don't know if they're non-binary. I don't know if they're trans. I think he's trans. I think they're trans. I don't know. But um, they were talking. And then, you know, Jewel felt as though, okay, if you got an issue with him, then you got an issue with me. And I just feel like this. Okay. I feel like this. Just because my friend don't like somebody, that don't mean I got to dislike them. But I know that for a fact that when Jamar had an issue with somebody, I didn't really have an issue with them, but I treated lightly with that person. You know what I mean? Only because of, maybe, you know, if Jamar told me some things that someone said about him or some things that someone did to him, I'm not going to necessarily treat them like shit when I see them. But it's like I'm kind of distant. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit up here and have an all-out war with somebody because Jamar got an all-out war with them. But at the same time, I got my eye on your ass, you know what I'm saying? And so it went from that to, you know, um, her saying that Melly B was being, you know, transphobic for not respecting the pronouns. And Melly B felt like, well, I don't like that bitch, so I'm not going to respect nobody's pronouns. I can say whatever the fuck I want to say. And I see it on both ends. You know, Jewel feels like this. If you don't, it's okay if you don't like this person, but that's still my friend, so just show me the respect. To not disrespect my friend in front of me. You know what I mean? Definitely understand that. Because even though, even if I don't have a problem with the person that Jamar got a problem with. You damn sure not going to talk about him in front of me. So whatever issue you got with him. You take it up with him. Or you talk about it with another group of people. If I'm around that group of people. And I'm sitting right there. Don't talk about him. Period. But Melly B feel like this. I'm only talking about that one person. I'm not talking about everybody. But it's just like this. When the guy. Not the game. When the baby said what he said. He wasn't talking about everybody. He was making a statement. But everybody took offense. Right? So I think it's the same damn thing. Being real. When Melly B comes home to a surprise. Okay? He comes home to a surprise. He was just going to fuck off on the phone about the situation. And he was up here telling his friends about the situation. And at this point, he's over Jewel at this point, And it is what it is. There's nothing nobody can say or do or tell him. He's over Jewel. But I think that Melly B should be a little bit more understanding. Um, he says that can't nobody tell him how to speak. It's not about telling you how to speak. It's just about the respect thing, you know. And for me, it's just like when a girl is friends with a man. And as soon as she gets mad with the man, she starts calling him a faggot. I see it all like that. So, I don't know. Um, so Martel and Jewel, you know, everybody getting ready for the brunch. So Martel and Jewel start talking about the brunch and, you know, Jewel is saying that she can be around him. She doesn't mind being around him. Millie B and Mulatto was talking and, you know, he was like, look, I ain't fucking with that bitch. I ain't speaking to that bitch. I ain't being cordial with that bitch because I don't like that bitch. I only speak to people that I like. And to be honest, I'm the same way. If I don't like you, I ain't speaking to you. Period. So, we get into the brunch, and then um, Rico and Eugene meet, and then after they meet, um, you know, 
Mulatto starts telling everybody what really happened between Jewel and um, Melly B the previous night. So after that, um, Eugene and Jewel, you know, because Jewel comes in, in the building, and um, Eugene and Jewel go outside and they talk, and Jewel was basically telling, her, telling him her side of the story. And he said that he would be willing to mediate the conversation and put them together so they could talk about it. Jewel said, well, I'm open to talk. I thought that was mature of her. But then after that, that everybody comes outside, comes to the table, and Mulatto wants to play a game. And the game is mainly about what are facts that people around here don't know about you. Jewel says that she's a witch. I can see that. Remy Martell said he got two boyfriends. Oh, okay. Must be nice. Eugene was a stripper. I believe it. He can strip for me anytime he fucking want to. I'm just saying. Tevin said that his hair is real. I believe that his hair is real. I believe everything about him is real. It's just that Tevin is fine as fuck to me. And he's like my, like a human glass of water to me. And I'm being thirsty at the moment. But Tevin is fine as fuck to me. Great skin, great hair, just everything. You know, I like girls too. So it is what it is. Mega body is OCD. I believe that she. And he said he dated Eugene. So if he dated Eugene, who the fuck, who was fucking who? Somebody better tell me that. Who, who was topping who? That's what I want to know. Rico was a female impersonator. I never knew that until, you know, earlier in the episode when Alyssa said she knew uh, Rico, but she didn't know Rico as the Rico that we're seeing on film. She knew him as somebody else. And it looked like he was doing his damn thing being a female impersonator, child. This is shy, which is obvious. Dante said he wants kids. Did he say he was bisexual? I hope I heard it right. Bella B said he a real person, and if you don't, and if you can't, and only uh, you can only, you know, respect that if you real. No crystals needed. And when he said that, I already knew where it was going. Eugene starts up the conversation, and Jewel and Melly B just gets into it again. And I'm not even gonna spend too much time on this. All I'm gonna say is this: y'all just gotta agree to fucking disagree at this point, because there is really no need to keep talking about this shit. At the end of the day, Melly B don't give a fuck. As wrong as it may be, Melody don't care. He feels as though, I don't like you. I'm going to disrespect you to the to the fullest. I don't give a fuck about you. That's where he at with it. Jewel is like, that's my friend, so don't disrespect my friend and my presence. That's also admirable and understood. Don't disrespect my friend and my presence. I understand that. So, y'all may as well just stop. Just agree to disagree. Everybody's grown. Y'all don't mesh, y'all don't mesh. It is what it is. Just let this shit go. I'm sorry, y'all, but that's all I got because we spent a whole episode arguing about this and I'm just like, no one really cares at the end of the day. Like, J Jewel and, and Melly B just gotta go their separate ways and just keep it pushing because they ain't gonna never see eye to eye on this situation. Ever gonna see eye to eye on this situation and that's just that on that. But y'all, this is my um, review of the Circle Atlanta. I see now that it's heating up. We're out of the honeymoon stage and we're getting into the mess and it looks like it's a to be continued, so we're going to see where it goes with this. Um, Jamar's trying to set up an interview with one of them this week, so we'll see. Y'all y'all will get into it when I post a uh, flyer. But I ain't going to tell y'all who it is, but I'm, I'm trying to see. Um, but with that being said, y'all, this is my review on The Circle. Be sure to like, rate, comment, and subscribe, and share my video. Do whatever you see fit. If you want to follow me on social media... My Twitter and my IG would be down below. With that being said, y'all, I'm out of here. I got some more videos to do. And be sure to tune in to my panel tonight uh, so we can talk about Potomac. And I'm out of here, y'all. Peace out. We can always find our way to a fun moment, even in the shady bunch.